Hi FlossTube, good morning, it is Helen D. Uh, today is Wednesday, January 26th, I think. Maybe, it's January and it's a Wednesday and it's 13 degrees outside. Um, this is not a regular FlossTube update. I feel like you guys have seen me like every week for a while. Uh, this is not a regular FlossTube update. I wanted to give an update on our strawberry stitch along that we've I talked about last time and a lot of people are going to join me about. So I want to give an update on supplies um, and show you how I cut my fabric for strawberries, just to kind of give a tip, something you might not have thought about. Um, yeah, so that's what this will be. So first of all, Giant thank you to everyone who's interested in joining this stitch along. Um, Carla at Cop Up Corner is the one who had mentioned, you know, what are you working on this year? Maybe we can, you know, do a discount code and get something worked out. And I said, these berries. And she said, let's go for it. We had no idea how many people would want to stitch these berries. Um, berries aren't for everyone. They're not everyone's cup of tea. The charts have been out, except the winter one, like the other ones have been out, so we didn't really know how many people would need them. Um, turns out a lot of you are trying to get them. So I want to start with a chart update. Um, so what I'm talking about, in case you haven't heard, I am going to be stitching this year all four sets of these seasonal berries that uh, Linda, Linda Stoltz, who runs Erica Michaels Designs, released last year. So spring, summertime, autumn, and winter. Each chart has three berries. Um, my goal is to stitch them. Uh, I should have started already so that I'd be ready for spring, but my goal is to stitch them so that I have like the spring set ready to put out in spring and then the summer set ready to put out in summer. So berries actually stitch up pretty quickly. They're not super huge. A couple of these are a little, a little more stitching than others, but I think they'll be fine. So um, Carla, cobwebcorner.com is offering, I have a special code. It's HDBerry, which I'll put down below, and that will give you... Um, an extra 10% off all four of these charts. Carla has a whole bunch of berry charts on her website, um, but the code is only good on these four, so the four seasonal berries. Um, she has more coming in. Last week, when I made the video kind of announcing it, um, I think we messaged back and forth a few times every day. <laughs> like, there's this many people on the wait list. All my charts are gone. I had to put in an order. Now there's this many people on the wait list. I put in another order. I think she ordered berry charts four separate times last week from her regular distributors until she like bought out their stock. Uh, I think she ordered from Linda Stoltz herself twice. <laughs> so they're coming. I know that some people weren't, I mean, obviously if they're on the wait list, they weren't able to get them. Um, they're coming, patience. Both of the companies that I'm working with to kind of help figure this out are, are single one woman shows. <laughs> so patience. Um, she, Carla listed some yesterday and I know she has more coming this week. At this point, she's at the mercy of the postal system. So when the charts come in, uh, she's getting them right on her website, notifying the people on the waiting list. And then as soon as you order, she's getting them right out. Um, I want to show you a couple things, and I don't know how reflecty this is going to be. So, on Cop Up Corner, I don't know about this, folks. So, on Carla's website, it's, it's too big for my hand. Up here, if you click on these little buttons, some drop down menus come down, and one of them is series by designer and if you click on that it shows different designers if you click on Erica Michaels seasonal berries so in this section Carla has an update like a shipping update 
and all of the charts as well as the pin packs. The pin packs, we also, no idea how many people are gonna want those. Those are kind of an extra thing, right? Like some people might be like, I want all the things. Some people might say, hmm, they're kind of an extra, I don't need those, or I might get those a little later. So she ordered the pin packs that go with the charts. They all sold out. She has more of those on order as well. Um, they'll get here. So I want to show you how to add your name to the waitlist. Okay, so one of these charts, like here's spring berries. Sorry, this is so reflective. So spring berries, you can see it says, I think you can, I can't get close enough. It says zero in stock. And right below that it says add to wish list. That is not what you want. So if you actually click in the chart so that it opens it, down here on the bottom, uh, put me on the waiting list. If you were going on a regular one, that's where it would say add to cart. If you can't add it to cart, it will say put me on the waiting list. She also has attached, like here's the two pin sets that go with that chart. So you could click on one of those. Oh, it did load, I couldn't tell. And then again, put me on the waiting list. So when you join the waiting list, then she knows how many people are looking to get those charts um, and she's able to order them in and the pins. So there's the update on that. Um, I'll link the code down below. It's good all year. The HD Berry code is good all year. So if you wanna join in later, if you get one, if you're like, oh, I can't get them all, but I was gonna start with summer, get summer. You can get the others later, right? It's good all year. Um, that is that. Okay, that's charts and pins. Wool. Um, I contacted Karen of Ruby Mountain Dye Works. I've used her wools before. Um, this one, this is a berry I made last year. I used her wools for the cap. Um, and I said, hey, any chance you'd be willing to put together some wool bundles? She sells wool in bundles on her website, but they're more like color sets, right? Reds, blues, greens. I said, we're looking for very specific colors. Uh, and I don't know how many people would want these, right? Like you're, you're offering to put all this work into custom dyeing these colors. It might be for 10 people. It might be for 100 people. I asked you guys on the last video to comment if you were interested. I think it's going to be 100 people. <laughs> so what I did is when I worked with Karen, I, I was sending her pictures of the charts. And on the backs, right, they show how Linda Stoltz did the toppers. And this is what I based the wool packs on. So like this one, these two are in a sage green. This is in a brighter mossy green. There's some blue eggs, some brown nest, a purple flower. Okay, so I should have opened this. They come on nicely packaged in this crinkly package. All right, uh, there's a sheet with like washing instructions and stuff. It's pre-washed, so basically it's don't wash them in hot water. Don't wash your strawberries in hot water. <laughs> um, we shouldn't have to. I asked her about like color fastness, and I said mainly what we're concerned about is like when you store them, if they rub up against each other. So she said no, it's if you like really treated them in hot water that something would die. Uh, she says you can use a warm iron to flatten and all that, which is good, because we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> so here is the spring pack. So there will be four separate packs of felt, and I apologize if I wasn't clear on that. Uh, one pack of felt for each set of berries. So it seems we're starting with spring, she started with spring. Um, there's the purple. This is the brighter mossy green, which kind of goes with the purple. Two sage greens, and she did them so that one of them is like a patterned and one is a plain, so you could do one with a pattern and one with a plain. A brown and a robin's egg blue. <clears throat> the brown has some little like dots in it, and then the robin's egg. So these wool pieces are five by seven. 
This is enough wool to finish, I'm trying to square them back up, to finish all three berries in the seasonal chart that they go with. So this will definitely get you through all three of the spring berries. Um, she said, she's had some questions from people asking, right, how many berries can I get out of this? It depends. Um, it depends on what fabric you use, um, how conservatively you cut. If you, if you go to cut your berry topper out of here and you're like my son who eats the middle brownie, well then you're not gonna get as much. <laughs> but if you're serving from the edge, then you'll get more. Um, so I wanna show, for example. So these are two of the templates I use um, for my berry toppers. And you can see, like this would be the base. There's definitely, like you could get a couple full toppers and still have extra for leaves, circles, you know, other little, the rolling up the little eggs, other little things you wanna do. So there's definitely enough wool for all three berries in the pack. Like this one where the two berries are the two different greens, are they're both sage green. That's why I asked her to put two sage greens in there. So you could have, you know, I'm gonna do one of my greens with the pattern and one is a solid. So the packs, each, each of the berries packs is $13 and that includes shipping to the US. Um, Karen does ship internationally. The rates will differ depending on where you are. Uh, and that's kind of set by Etsy at some point, at, at, you know, in some way. So, the spring bundle is available now. She has it posted on her Etsy store. She is dyeing the spring bundle to fill those orders and also working on the summer bundle. Um, the summer bundle is the only, like, I'll go over those in a minute. So, on her website, on her Etsy store, and I'll link these below. So it's Ruby Mountain Dye Works. If you go up here where it says, sorry you guys, it's backwards to me. There's like a drop down menu. There's one that says seasonal berries. And if you click in that, which I thought I did, there's the spring. As she gets more dyed, she will add them to this section so they're easier to find. Um, she also said when she has all four seasons dyed, which is gonna be a while, right? Because this is spring, she's working on summer, she has autumn and winter. When they're all dyed, she will offer a full bundle of all four packs. Um, and if you're buying all four packs, she'll do a 15% discount. So. If you're trying to stitch them and finish them for the season, like I'm just gonna get individual packs so I know I have them on time. If you're waiting or you're starting with a later season, uh, it might be worth it for you to wait. If you're international and you wanna only pay shipping once and the discount would offset some of the shipping, it might be worth it to wait. So that is personal choice. Um, checking my notes. Yeah, I think that's it. So the different berries bundles, they will all have enough for just what's in that, that season. Summertime, this is the tricky one because on the back, this berry right here, she really layered it up. So it has a light brown, and then I think it's like a purple and a green and an orange, like it has a bunch. Well, that would be way more than six pieces of wool. So what Karen is going to do for us is some of those brighter colors that you really only need like a one inch circle, she's gonna give us a half piece. So it will really just be one of these cut in half. So we'll get, I think it's four, I think it's four full sheets and then four half sheets. It's the same amount of wool, it's just separated out a little bit. Uh, autumn and winter call for less colors. <laughs> so this one, you know, it only has four colors and then the same with the winter. 
kind of only had four. So I said, well, on those packs, to keep them to the same six pieces, um, just give us some alternatives. So like the autumn pack, she's going to do kind of matching these called fours and then add in two additional like autumn type colors so you can mix and match and you might choose something that looks a little different. So that's the update on the packs, the wool packs. Um, her wool is really nice. Like I said, this one, this one I used her wool. I really like it. So they're available. I'll link down below. Those, like she has some in stock and then they will kind of be dyed to order. Um, the colors are all set and that's kind of what takes the longest time. If she's overwhelmed with orders right at, right in the beginning, it might take, you know, a few days to kind of get those batches dyed up. So again, patience. Um, well, a couple other supplies that you might want to, they're more finishing supplies, but while you're gathering supplies, you might want to have on hand. Um, these Dritz doll needles, these are a five inch, are really, really helpful when you're attaching the berry tops. Um, these are available like at Joann's. I've seen them at my Joann's. So I think a lot of craft stores, regular craft stores have these, I bet some online shops have these. Um, they're inexpensive, it's a two pack, you only need one. <laughs> Um, and these are harder to lose than your little needles. So this is something you might want to pick up. <clears throat> Freezer paper. <clears throat> it comes, it comes in a smaller package. We actually use it to freeze meat. So that's why I have the big package. So the Reynolds freezer paper, you can trace your shape onto there's a shiny side. There's like a waxy side and a non-waxy side. You trace it on the non-waxy side, cut it out, iron it onto your felt, and it stays right there because of the waxiness. And that way you can really cut a nice even shape and then it just peels right off. And none of the wax stays on your felt. So it's really, really convenient. Um, <clears throat> the Reynolds works great. I did pick up and I've only used it the once. I have other wool projects I'm hoping to do this year and a lot of people had recommended this so I thought I would try it. So I will throw it out there. This is a heavy duty freezer paper. It's by Cutright. I found this on Amazon. It's a pack of 25 pieces. So, you know, it's gonna last me a while. It's thicker. It's like cardstock weight. Um, and the reason that I got this is because you can use it multiple times. The freezer paper, you're one and done. This stuff you're supposed to be able to use like five or six. Like you iron it, you pull it off, you can re-iron it back on. I haven't really tried that because I was cutting out a penguin. So I haven't really tried it on berries. Um, but that's another option. But the regular freezer paper works just fine. I'm out of space. Um, and then you might want buttons, ribbons, you know, different things for the tops, um, little, little extras. Uh, templates, let's talk about templates. So in these charts, the chart packs come with the charts for all three. And then there's another page on the inside that gives you like the full, you know, the floss legend. Uh, if there's any kind of different stitches, like this one has a, like a leaf, it has really great instructions, um, gives some basic finishing. And then when you open it up on the inside, there's a template, like there's a topper template and there's the berry templates. And she gives you all the sizes, right? So it's like 20 count, 40 count, 1836, 1632, and 1428 and you basically like cut this out put it on a piece of paper that you fold it in half right to like get the full thing um i'd already done that <laughs> for mine 
So I thought I'd make you guys a full template so you don't have to do any, there's no origami. So I have uploaded to my link tree and I will also put the link down below, two, two templates, two pages. So I have, I didn't have the small berry, the 40 count or 20 count, but I had the other three. And then like there's my star shaped top, there's my scallop top, there's a couple like leaf patterns. And then in case you needed them, I used just my circle, I have a circle template and just made you some circles, different sizes. So that way you can just cut these out and not have to do any fiddling. Um, my, my scallop and, and even the star, I like my toppers a little on the big side. Um, so this is based on a three inch circle. You, you may need to adjust, right? Like if you want, if you're doing a 20 count, you do not want that big of a topper. So you might need to kind of adjust the size. Um, I've been stitching mine on 32 count Lugana. So this is kind of my topper to berry ratio with some cat hair. I like it a little longer, a little bigger because then it covers up some of like the bunching when you when you kind of cinch berry together. Um, same with this one. This is kind of that star. So complete personal preference. Some people like a little a little small topper. Some people might want bigger than this. So personal preference. Um, hitting the wrong buttons on things. So there's some templates. Use, don't use, they're there for you. Um, I had a few people ask, you know, when they said, you know, I'd love to start, I'd love to join. I've never done a berry before. Are you gonna kind of show us how to do them? Absolutely, like that's the whole point, right? I want, I started doing berries really last year and I really, really like them. Uh, and I want you guys to like them too. So I wanna kind of go through the steps along with you. Um, I already have a strawberry tutorial up on my channel. I'll link that below if you kind of want to watch that before you decide if you want to join in to see if it's something you think you can do. You totally can do it. They look difficult, but they are not. Um, and they may not even look difficult to you. I was always intimidated by them, but once you actually do them, they're really not bad. Um, minimal sewing, just this line, one line. Um, the rest is just kind of, you know, cinching the top and attaching the topper. So that tutorial is up. I'm going to show you today um, kind of the beginner thing, right? When you're starting a berry is getting your fabric ready. And then my plan is when I finish the spring berries, I'll record myself making the toppers for those so that that will be up. Um, so that's my plan. And if you ever have questions going along, just ask me. <laughs> I'm, I may know the answer. If not, I'll try and find the answer for you. Um, some people have said, I'd like to join in, but I already have this other berry pattern. Yes, join in, any berry pattern. I did look and I'm going to use the hashtag, um, hashtag berry season SAL, because no one else had used it yet. So berry season sell. Um, so, because I'm making a lot of berries, and last year I had been making a lot of berries, I traced my templates, and then what I did is I made some like, instead of having them on paper, I wanted things a little thicker. Cardstock would have been great. I had, um, I had a file folder. So I've made like file folder templates that I can trace on my freezer paper. The berry shapes themselves, I decided, they're all in my conveniently labeled strawberry template folder. Um, I wanted them clear so that I could see a little easier what I was cutting out. So I had some leftover vinyl, like you would use from the, like a project bag vinyl. Um, any kind of thicker, clear plastic. Some people said they'd used um, like a thicker page protector sheet that they'd found. Um, the bags that like mattresses come in, not mattresses, like mattress covers, 
sheet sets. Sometimes they come in that thicker plastic. Um, a vinyl file folder, like in a light color that you could see through. Something that you can see through to get an idea. Oh, someone said they used cutting boards that they got at the dollar store. So they were like a really thin material um, and they were perfect. And those would actually be a little more sturdy than mine. So I traced the three major sizes and made clear templates, so they're not gonna show up very well. Clear templates. And then I just put a little sticky on them to kind of show like, this is my 18 and right so that when they're in my folder and I'm pulling one out I can know what I'm getting so these are great for when you're actually doing your finishing to lay out on your berry and know that you're lining things up um, they're also great for cutting your fabric so I'm doing mine on a 16 so the template itself this is your stitched area and then when you're cutting it out to finish, you leave a half inch seam allowance around the whole thing. So when I'm stitching my berry, I know, the first berry I made, I use way too much fabric. Um, I'm cheap with my fabric, so I didn't want to do that again. This is how much fabric I need. I need this plus a half an inch all around. So I can take a piece of fabric and just lay that on and see if I have enough. And what I've found is, you know, when you buy fabric and it's kind of folded and folded a hat and half again, um, that little section typically on a 16 count is a good fit. Um, this one was not folded even. You can see that I cut a chunk because this is one of the colors I'm using. Um, so, I don't know how well you can see with my clear. I, I have just about a half inch. Now, if you want a little more than that on the sides, just cut it a little bigger, but you know that you don't need a whole giant piece. So I use that to measure what I'm cutting and then cut around it. For the spring berries, I chose three kind of natural. This one you can see I, I cut a little bigger because it was a little tight, so maybe you can see. So this is that platinum fabric. Fits right on my template. I have like a light gray. Just a half inch. And then I think this is an ivory. Just a half inch. Because I didn't want to I didn't want to waste you can cut a little bigger than that but the first time I did one I took like one of those 9 by 13 cuts and I just stitched it right in the middle now when you cut it this way I would recommend starting in the center of your pattern so that you can fold it and fold it and make sure you're good to go so that's my tip for cutting your fabric um, so that you don't have a lot of extra I think that's it. That's it. So I will put all those links down below. Again, waiting list for the charts. Carla has like three orders coming in <laughs> this week, so those will be there. Um, I'll put the code down below. The wool, spring wool packs are available now. When all four packs are done, so in a, in a while, um, There'll be a discount code if you want to wait for that, or a discount, it's not even a code. She'll just have them on there as a separate listing. Um, the templates, I'll put the PDF link down below. I think that's it. Hashtag Berry Season Sell. I'm planning on starting my first one in mid-February. My birthday is the 13th. I'm gonna make it my birthday start. Um, you don't need to wait for me. If you have your stuff, launch in. Um, that way you'll have them stitched and ready to finish. Um, I just don't want people to think I'm starting without them because I know that people are waiting on supplies. Um, so that's when I'm going to start mine. Uh, the starting with the spring and then when the spring's done I'll just move on to the next season. So I think that's it. 
If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will be back next weekend, next week, um, with my regular update. So thank you guys. Bye.